In this video, I wanna go over some basic microeconomic principles that can help us understand what's going on with the pandemic and reopening. And this is a really good video if you are preparing for an AP microeconomics exam or if you wanna review like intro economic principles. But even if you're not in that situation, this is gonna be hopefully an informative video for you. So my name's Craig, this is Market Power, where we go over the power markets and economics to shape our world. And of course, with everything going on in the world, we really need to understand economics to understand what's going on. And what I really like about some of the questions that we're facing right now is how the basic tools of microeconomics can help us understand what some of the people going through today, what some people are going through today. and why some people are pushing for full opening or might, you know, just all these little things that go on, the nuance. A lot of it has to do with economics. So today I'm doing like a slightly different video than I normally do. I'm in my kid's homeschooling room and I have this whiteboard right here where I'm gonna go through and just draw out one of these graphs for you, for you to understand what's going on. And hopefully you'll participate as well, especially if you're preparing for an exam. I hope you're thinking through this and giving it a little bit more thought than just watching me do this. So let's imagine we're a restaurant. Let's be the lockdown restaurant uh, in the city of Corona. It's a pretty big city. There's a lot of people here. Uh, more importantly, there are a lot of restaurants here. So it's a very competitive restaurant scene and competitions at the point where the restaurant is making zero economic profits. So how would we draw out their cost curves and price everything in this for this firm? Well, this is gonna be a pretty easy intro microeconomics question, but go ahead and take a second to think about this. I'm gonna draw this out for myself. So we have, we're gonna start off with the axes. Always make sure that you're labeling your axes so that way the people you're talking to understand what you're talking about and so you stay on top of what you're supposed to be doing. We have price on one axis and we have quantity on the other. And we're gonna have a marginal cost curve, right? And that marginal cost curve kind of looks like a Nike swoosh, right? And so then we have marginal cost up here. And we also need to know average total cost and average variable cost. So we're gonna draw average total cost up here with average variable costs right below it. Oh, you know what? I realized that my, you know, the hardest part about drawing these things is my minimums are not crossing the marginal cost curve where they're supposed to. Let me quickly erase that, make sure our graphs are the way they're supposed to be. I was just kind of drawing indiscriminately, but especially if you're preparing for an exam, you should know that the marginal cost curve crosses average total cost and average variable cost at their minimum. So where is the profit maximizing price and quantity? Well, I already said that they're operating at zero economic profits. So we know that zero economic profits is gonna be when price hits the minimum of average total cost. So here is gonna be the profit maximizing price and quantity. Now, of course, since this is a perfectly competitive market, this price is coming from the market, right? I'll, I'll even draw a straight line right there so we know this is coming from the market, not because this firm has any monopoly power. These are the basic curves that we have here. And you know, this looks like a, any normal graph that you'll take when you take that intro economics course. Here's where the insight comes in. Let's imagine in the city of Corona, the pandemic has hit and now all the restaurants have to shut down. You know, obviously with this, we're just, you know, everything goes out the window on this one. Um, but now let's imagine a world where they're starting to reopen. And because of social distancing, restaurants are allowed to reopen, but they can only reopen at 50% capacity. What is this graph gonna look like? What do we know about, what can we, what predictions can we make from our understanding of economics just by having this simple graph and imagining a 50% capacity restaurant? I'm gonna give you a second to think about that. I hope you're drawing these out for yourself. I want you to imagine what is this graph going to look like? Take that second right now. So, 
Here we are, we're at this point, this is the optimal. Now let's say that this is full capacity. I guess I should have made that assumption beforehand, but here we are, we're gonna be at full capacity, they're making zero economic profits. What does 50% capacity look like? Where they're gonna go down this graph and they're gonna go halfway, right? This is gonna be 0.5 Q star. Now this is a, probably a question that you haven't actually encountered in a microeconomics class, but that's why I wanna do this because it forces us to think beyond the normal types of adjustments we make to these. Because here we are at 0.5 Q star, the 0.5 of the optimal quantity right here, because we're at 50% capacity. And it's like we're imposing a quota. We're saying you are only allowed to go up to this amount. So we're gonna draw a line right here. That is the quantity that they're allowed to have. And what's it, this graph gonna look like? Let me extend that average variable cost curve up there. So we're gonna have the same price. We're gonna assume that there are no changes in price here. You can make the argument, well, you know, if everybody's at 50% quantity, you know, we're gonna have a shift to the left of the supply curve, price is gonna go up. And let's get rid of that. Let's just say prices are either sticky or there's an anti-price gouging measure where you don't wanna raise your prices during pandemic. What happens here? Price hits here. What are costs? Well, we're gonna hit the average variable cost curve here. And then even further up, we'll hit average total costs. So our costs are way up here. And why is that the case? Well, to run a restaurant, you have like a minimum amount of things that you need to do. You need to have waiters, you need to have chefs, you need to have food, you're running that, your electricity. No matter who's showing up, you are having people there running it. So you have your fixed costs and you have your variable costs on waiters. And for a lot of restaurants, those average variable costs are pretty high when you have a low quantity. But as you expand out, as you get more and more people coming in, you know, your waiter or your waitress is able to serve more people. And so you're spreading out the cost of that server over a larger quantity. And so your average variable costs decrease really quickly. But what does this say? This says that under a 50% quota, we're gonna be operating in a place where price is below average variable cost. And what do we know about average variable cost? What, what do we know when price is below average variable cost? This is when the shutdown rule comes in, right? We know that if price, the, the, what I like about this, this looks different than a normal shutdown rule, right? Let me show you what the normal shutdown rule looks like. Let me take out another color marker right here. I'm gonna do this kind of uh, red pinkish color. Normally, when we think about the, uh, the shutdown rule, we're thinking about a decline in price to some P prime that comes across and hits the marginal cost curve below average variable cost. We know that if the price is hitting somewhere in this range, so we, in fact, we can, as long as the price is below this mark right here, we know that this is when you shut down. But that's because we're used to thinking about these graphs in terms of what happens to price and when does it come over and hit marginal costs. We don't usually look at these graphs in terms of what happens when you impose a quota, when you're not allowed to produce more than this. But the shutdown rule still applies. If this is the quota that you're imposed and the price is right here and the costs are up there, you still have a shutdown rule, which means it's more beneficial. It's the, the, the rational decision is for you to not open up at all. Which makes sense when you look about what's going on here, right? When you have these restaurants where they're told, well, you can open up, but you can only be at 50% capacity, so that way we can preserve social distancing. This is why we're gonna have people protesting that, who are upset about that, because at 50% capacity, they can't profitably function. That's a really big problem for them. And so this small, graph, right? This basic microeconomics graph has like such a powerful prediction from it. It has a prediction here during a pandemic that there are going to be people who prefer to not be in business than to operate at, at this 50% capacity. We're seeing that. It's, it's insane that something so simple, so basic, so introductory is relevant today. This is why I love economics. This is why 
I think we need more people understanding economics because this is a policy that's affecting so many people. And to have it so clearly defined right here just makes me excited for economics. Speaking of which, this channel is all about being excited and interested in economics. If you're the kind of person that's watching this to practice for an AP test, you're probably somebody who wants to learn more about economics. So I really encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Check out some of these other videos about majoring in economics, also about fun economic experiments and economics in the real world, because we, we want to see you here at Market Power. Let me know in the comments below if you have other questions about economics during these times. We'll see ya.